Welcome to Unsightly Opinions, my name's Tamara. Today, I want to talk about the condition which causes my eyes to shake called nystagmus. I want to talk about what causes it, who experiences nystagmus, my nystagmus personally, and some things you can do to help deal with your nystagmus if you have nystagmus. People often have questions about why my eyes shake. My nystagmus is a hallmark of my albinism. So most people with albinism will have a nystagmus to varying degrees. And my nystagmus will change day to day and get better or worse depending on certain circumstances, but we'll talk about that in a minute. There are many different forms of nystagmus and someone may have one or multiple forms. I have two forms that affect me day to day. First, there's pendular nystagmus, which I believe is the most common form. And pendular nystagmus means that your eyes rapidly move back and forth in a straight line. There's rotary or circular nystagmus, which means that your eyes rotate in small circles. There's vertical nystagmus, which means that your eyes sh shake up and down. Or there's jerk nystagmus, which means that your eyes drift off and then jerk back to center. I have a mix of pendular and jerk nystagmus. It should be noted that nystagmus is typically not voluntary. I don't feel my eyes shaking, they just do it. I've had it my entire life, so I've never known anything different. I have never had any control of my nystagmus, and I don't even notice it most of the time. I can't feel my eyes shaking, although if I close my eyes and put my fingers on my eyelids, I can feel my eyes shaking behind my eyelids, or I can sometimes see my nystagmus if somebody's shining a bright light in my face, in which case I'll see the light start moving or shaking. It should be noted that for most people, nystagmus is not voluntary, although some people can create a voluntary shaking of their eyes, and that's called voluntary nystagmus. Nystagmus can occur at any point in someone's life. Congenital nystagmus, or nystagmus you're born with or developed before three months of age, is most common with a variety of different eye disorders. Nystagmus is a hallmark of my eye disorder, which is albinism. So most people with albinism will have some form of nystagmus. It can also occur in conditions with strong astigmatisms, congenital cataracts, or optic nerve development disorders. There's another form of nystagmus which typically develops when you are young called spasmus newtons. And that typically occurs with a bobbing of the head or a tilt of the head that will improve before the age of eight or nine. You can also get acquired nystagmus, which can occur later on in life. And there's a variety of neurological or physiological conditions that can cause nystagmus to develop. Nystagmus can be caused by a whole host of things outside of eye-specific diseases. Nystagmus can be a symptom of central nervous system disorders like multiple sclerosis. It can occur after a stroke or head trauma. It can also occur if somebody is taking various drugs, notably anti-epilepsy medications, or is intoxicated with illicit substances. That has gotten me into trouble more than once with police officers who are trained to look for that as a sign of intoxication. I was stone cold sober both times I was stopped and had to explain that my nystagmus was due to my albinism, not due to any form of intoxication. I think if you can string oculocutaneous albinism into a sentence, they tend to let you off a lot easier. Nystagmus can affect vision in a variety of different ways. It can reduce your visual acuity or your ability to see fine detail. It can cause the world around you to shake or shift. It can also cause varying degrees of photophobia or light sensitivity and difficulty seeing in the dark or night blindness. For some people, it can also lead to dizziness and balance issues. And while nystagmus is typically a miscommunication between your eyes and your brain, it can also be a miscommunication between one of your cranial nerves, specifically the one that controls eye movement and hearing, or eye movement and balance, to miscommunicate with your brain as well, causing your eyes to shake. And that's what typically causes dizziness or balance issues. For those born with nystagmus, there is no cure. In very extreme circumstances, surgery can be performed to help reduce nystagmus, but it will not eliminate it entirely. For those individuals, they will find the null point, or the point where the nystagmus is the least, and try and adjust where your eyes sit so that you are focused 
on exactly that point and you don't need to tilt your head or move your eyes into a very specific spot to be able to see appropriately. For some people, certain medications will help, but usually that will be for acquired nystagmus. It's possible for people with acquired nystagmus or nystagmus that develop later in life to go away, but that often involves the treatment of whatever the underlying condition is, whether that's taking medication to help balance your inner ear or eliminating alcohol and drug toxicity. For those with chronic nystagmus, for those with congenital nystagmus, there are some tips that can help improve your nystagmus. First, I would recommend determining what your triggers are. For me, my nystagmus gets worse when I'm sick. It gets worse when I'm tired. It gets worse when I'm stressed. It gets worse when I'm fatigued. Those are my triggers. Everyone might have slightly different triggers. For me, it's taking frequent breaks to make sure that I'm not fatigued. It's taking care of myself when I'm sick so I don't push myself further into exhaustion. It's making sure that I try and maintain my stress level at an appropriate level, and it's managing my photosensitivity, so I use a variety of methods for that, from hats to sunglasses to changing the lighting around me using dimmer switches. Some people might want to increase the lighting if they have difficulty in low lighting situations. For me personally, my photophobia is far worse, so I try and maintain low lighting situations. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about nystagmus, I'm happy to answer them in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. If you have content suggestions, I'd love to hear those down below as well. If you enjoy content like this, you can support the channel by liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. But that's all I have for you today. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.